On Friday morning, the Montreal Canadiens woke up to their first win with Martin St. Louis as coach. And Canadiens fans also were introduced to the new co-director of amateur scouting, Nick Bobrov, and special advisor to hockey ops, Vincent Le Cavalier. Good moves, not so good moves. And who's the next hire for the Habs? We'll discuss with mon chum, Luc Jelena of RDS. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast with Tony Maradero. The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. Now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadiens win the Stanley Cup. Sports entertainment like no other. Brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. Oh, yeah. 8.6 beer, intense by nature. And dear, uh, indeed, the beer that uh, for those who follow their instinct and live their passions in order to make their mark. And it is the sick podcast. Welcome. I'm Marinero. And let's go to my chum, more friend, my friend, Luc Gelina. Hello, Tony. I think I said more friend for a second there. Okay. Uh, mon chum, okay. mon ami. <laughs> How are you? Really good, thanks. And you, Tony? Hey, we don't have a dress code on the show besides me wearing sick merchandise. You don't have to get all dressed up for me. But I don't have a t-shirt, so I dress properly. No, I'm just between two two live hits on RDS, so that's why I'm like that. <laughs> no, don't worry, I'm not selling cars. <laughs> uh, I Listen, I think it's safe to say that we weren't surprised that the Canadians confirmed the appointment of uh, Vincent Le Cavalier. I mean, we didn't, you know, it wasn't a question of if, it was a question of when. And this morning they made it official. And the title that they gave him, a special advisor to the hockey ops, which means he's probably the assistant GM, but he doesn't have to relocate to Montreal. So that's the title they give him. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think that's a good fit for him. Uh, the rumors the last couple of weeks since uh, Kent Hughes is there. In fact, uh, so a m- month ago, uh, we hear about the assistant to the GM and Vinny said today uh, he has no interest in that. He, ha- he have three kids, has three kids at home, pretty young, and there's no way he's going to move to Montreal full time. So uh, special advisor, what he's going to do, uh, he will challenge Kent Hughes about this, about this player, this player, uh, maybe a little bit of scouting too. And he spoke with Martin Saint Louis, and he, he will come to Montreal. He's going to be around, maybe on the road too, just to be with the players. Because the head coach, on a day-to-day basis, he has to work uh, with the players for game plan and stuff like that, and game preparation, and try trying to to win games. But Vinny doesn't have to do that. So he will be there to talk, chat with coffee and another guy, have a coffee, maybe meet some prospect, and uh, that's it. That's it. So. It's like like he told us for the last 20 years, Vincent and Kent Hughes, they were talking hockey every week together. Now he will do the same, but he's going to get paid. <laughs> That's not too bad. <laughs> His uh, Zoom call was Friday at 2.30 in the afternoon, and uh, I wouldn't relocate to Montreal either. There was the palm trees in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I need uh, it, so I it, cry uh, out, huh? yeah, Nice setup. Uh, I really like the that presser because I knew Vinny for more than 20 years. Uh, Vinny and his family, they were in my first book. And uh, from what I saw, he's really excited, really pumped to do that. Uh, of course, he knows the game really well. Uh, maybe he was not around, but every time we went to Tempo for Montreal Canadiens game against uh, the Lightning, he was there, we meet there all, all the time. So, uh, He's really, really happy. I, I believe that's a really good idea. Of course, I have a little concern. Tell me. It's about the big picture. Okay. And I mean, I'm not fair when I say a concern. I have a, a question. Yeah. Because we have Jeff Gorton. Yeah. Who are maybe not a friend, but a good relation. Can't use. Okay. He was never GM before. Who are a friend. Martin St. Louis. Yeah. And now another friend, Vincent Le Cavalier, and Nick Bobrov worked with Gorton in Boston and in New York. Yep. So we can call that a country club. Okay. And sometimes a country club can work, and maybe that's going to work. Yeah. Uh, we had the country club in Montreal who worked with Savard, 
and Boudria and a few other guys. And we have Jacques one. Lemaire, Carole yeah, Vadenay. Exactly. And the one with Carré, Hull, Tremblay, Cournoyer didn't work. You're right. So, and we'll shots. see. Give them some time. But the, the fact is, that's a country club. Man, that's okay too. That's the way it works. Okay. We yeah. do stuff together because we know each other. Yeah. That's a little country club. That's fine. I, I'm not complaining, but I'm anxious to see if that's going to work. And I will ask the question to Ken Hughes. Uh, and, and, and François Gagnon asked the question to Vincent Lecavalier. And I, I love his answer. He said, I know Ken for 20 years. We talk our key together almost every day. And yep. he knows I can challenge him. I won't be there to agree with him all the time. I won't be agree and we're going to have some argument. And that's fine. And that's why maybe he selected Vincent Le Cavalier because he knows he has a good hockey knowledge and he's going to tell him the truth. And that's really important. So when your friend yeah. is good, there's no problem. But we don't know yet if they're going to be good. Yeah. Now you talked about Country Club earlier this morning. You actually tweeted it, right? Yeah. And you yeah. got a lot of reaction Uh, you had some people who agreed with you. And of course, when you have an opinion, you had some people who didn't agree with you. Yeah. I'll say this. Joe Sackick hired Patrick Roy. Patrick Roy had hired Andre Turigny. list goes on and on. It but, does. but Patrick Roy has some experience. You're right. Coaching and you're coaching. Right. Maybe same thing for Andre Turigny. You're, you're okay. absolutely okay. right. Sorry. Mac Bergevin hired uh, Scott Mellenby. They hired Martin Lapointe. Yeah. And they even hired Jean-Jacques Daigneault over... Larry Robinson. Yeah. I think it's safe to say, with all due respect to Jean-Jacques, that Jean-Jacques wasn't as qualified as Larry, as Larry was, but there was a connection yeah. with Martin yeah. Bergevin to Jean-Jacques Daigneault. So what I'm saying is, and you, you said it, I think. I, I think it's fair. Very good late too as well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think it's fair that you said that there's a country club. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but like you also said, which I also think is fair, that's the way it is in hockey, right? You surround yourself with people you know and people you trust. And Jim Rutherford in Vancouver, who did he hire as general manager? He hired Alvin, right? And that's uh, who he worked with in yeah, Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh, yeah. And so uh, hopefully one day uh, you're going to own a radio station or a TV station or a podcast company, and you're going to call me to come work for you in the country of course, club. Yeah. <laughs> Because you're good. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I, was, I will say this, okay? Um, I love the hiring. I don't think we should diminish the hiring of Vincent Le Cavalier. Think about this. Uh, Vincent has a great eye. Vincent will be able to challenge uh, Kent Hughes. He will be able to help Martin St. Louis. Yep. It'll be an extra set of eyes they'll be scouting. He can help players come here if they're considering coming to Montreal as unrestricted free agents because to this day he says that his biggest regret is that he didn't ever end up playing for the Montreal Canadiens. He admitted today that he had approved the trade to the Canadiens, but of course, back in yeah, the day, 2008. it was a Tampa Bay Lightning co-owner that nixed the deal and it didn't go through. So I love that. Having said that, count me among those who are concerned with the hiring or will question the hiring of Nick Bobrov. With the exception of David Krejci, yeah. his body of work, I don't think is overly convincing. Yeah, yeah. When we, we, we see the records of players that he drafted from Europe, uh, it's not impressive. Like you said, uh, Krejci was a uh, footprint at the, at the beginning. Blueprint, yeah. footprint at the beginning. Uh, but after that, ooh. And the thing, I'm wondering how that's going to work with Martin Lapointe. Hey, at the end, who's going to say, okay, we're going to pick this guy? And... Uh, Sometimes, uh, like uh, Bobby Clark said, uh, what we saw in the Philadelphia in Philadelphia with uh, Ron Stahl. Yeah. At the end, he said no. He's the one who selected the players that he wanted. So, who's the bus? Who's going to be the bus? Really Look, crazy. listen to my take on this one. I don't want to um, say this out of. Uh, I don't want to lack respect towards Kent Hughes. I don't want to lack respect towards Martin Lapointe. I'm going to give you my opinion, and I'd love to have yours. To me, Jeff Gordon is in charge. Kent Hughes 
does have power and can make decisions. But ultimately, I believe he answers to Jeff Gordon. To me, Nick Bobrov is the guy that's going to be in charge. Uh, more so than Martin Lapointe. And I kind of feel, and I don't want to bring language into this, but I kind of feel that, of course, Hughes brings uh, the fact that he can communicate in French, which Gordon cannot. And Lapointe brings the fact that he communicate in French, which Bobrov cannot. No, so no, that, no, 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 sorry. Bobrov speaks French. Oh, we. Oui. He's, he's pretty good. Oh, je savais yeah. pas. No, no, nobody knows. He's pretty good. <laughs> wow, so it's Stone Chum. Is he a buddy of yours? Yeah, he's yeah, a part of the same country club. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't know it's my picket shows. I just learned something. A little scoop. <laughs> oh, very, very good. I'm, where, where did he pick that up? I'm wondering. I don't know. I, I have to uh, talk uh, with him. I mean, just to, to meet him, too. Maybe Perfect. they knew that one. Maybe when they looked into their crystal ball, they re they figured out one day they were going to work for the Montreal Canadiens. So they started taking. Uh, uh, seriously, in Europe, you no, know, it's all the a lot of people have four, five, six languages. Right. So Latin language too. Yeah. Marinero, whether it's it looks like the Canadians are trying to be a mix of the Rangers, the Bruins, and the Lightning. We'll talk about that in a second. If you want to buy a Canadians jersey or any one of those teams, sportbuffshop.com for all of your officially licensed sports apparel and sick merchandise. Use code six fifteen for 15% off on all of their items. Look, I tweeted that this morning. Doesn't it look that way that the Canadians going forward will look like a mix of the Bruins, the Rangers, and the Lightning? That's true. Very good organization. Uh, so, yeah, they, 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 maybe they, they took the best of, uh, of those organizations, and why not? Why not? The, and the thing I like with the, the Bruins and the Lightning, especially those two teams, they are... They keep winning. They don't have good draft pick, but they, they draft players in second, third round, and late in the first round. And those guys, they end up playing in the NHL, and uh, they, sometimes even they become impact players. Yeah. I think what you meant by that is they're they're very, for those who say, you don't, you, you, I don't think you meant they don't have good draft picks. They they finish very high in the standings they do very well and they're able to find players yeah. in in the later rounds so like take a Pittsburgh. look same thing with Pittsburgh Pittsburgh is the same yeah take a look at the first uh, all Murray uh in in Tampa I think has done an incredible job with okay yes they drafted Stamkos at first and they drafted Hedman at second mm -hmm. but the other players they drafted later on Braden Point Alex Kalorn Palat. Uh, um you were saying Palat. Palat, Kucherov, I mean, the, the Vasilevsky, Vasilevsky. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. They drafted a, a, a lot of players there, and there's other guys that were also undrafted and talking about the Tyler Johnsons of the world or uh, the Annie Gords of the world. Now, and uh, so before that. Yeah, Marcia so you're right. And the Boston Bruins, uh, I mean, they, they drafted uh, Patrice Bergeron in the second round. He ended up being Marcia one of the best overall. players and one of the deepest drafts ever. They drafted David Krejci, I believe, was drafted 25th, if memory serves me well. Milan Lucic, they drafted Brad Marchand, who I think was in the 70s. Uh, they, David, yeah, they did, a, they did a really good job as well. The Rangers, it's, uh, listen, it's interesting. Pierre Lebrun joined me last show, and he was saying, don't be surprised if the Canadians and the Rangers will make a trade. The Rangers are interested in Sherratt. They're interested in Lekkonen. There's prospects the Canadians could, that could go after there. So the fact that you have Bobrov, who has uh, basically uh, internal knowledge of some of the Rangers' prospects, it becomes interesting. Apparently, Lundqvist uh, is a very good prospect, and apparently uh, the, the Rangers receive a lot of offers for him. So maybe Montreal is, is in the mix. Look, maybe. who who could, the, you know, with the trade deadline being on the 21st of March... If the Canadians would trade X player, um, you would be surprised. Who would that be? That, uh, that I will be surprised? Yeah, that you'll be, you would be surprised if they would trade a player in particular. Yeah, we have con money consideration. Um, so I will be surprised if they can trade Petri because of the contract. Yeah. I believe he will leave during the, the summertime. Yeah. So, but... They want to trade him. He wants to leave, but I will be surprised because because of the money involved, and there are still three years after this this season, I believe, to his contract.
You know, look, some people are saying, okay, Petrie wanted to leave. He has to be traded. They were willing to accommodate him. But if they can get him back on the right track and they can continue to go in the right direction, maybe they'll have him reconsider. I'd like to say this. I'd love to have your take. I think they're okay if he doesn't reconsider. Look, I think because of his age and his contract and what they want to accomplish here over the next couple of years, I, I think they're determined to actually to trade him. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And he's not as bad as what we saw this year. He's, he's a better hockey player than that. And he's not maybe as good as last year, half season, when we were talking about him for the Norris Trophy. But he's, he's still a reliable uh, defenseman and he's, he's a good person. So uh, I hope they're going to be able to do something for him because clearly it's that's really tough for him uh, on the ice. Of the yeah. ice, we don't know, but his family is far away. And even if you're a hockey player or a Hollywood actor, it's, that's not important. You be still a father. You're still a husband. And I, I believe that's really tough for him to be so far away from his family. Hey, uh, look, I was um, really all for the hiring of Martin St. Louis. The way I looked at it, he had 37 games. There was an interim tag and nothing to lose. The worst case scenario, they would lose games. Players wouldn't get better. Their confidence would still dip, which I think would have happened had they not made a coaching change. That was the worst case scenario. Best case scenario, you give him an opportunity to prove himself. He shows what he can do, and he could be your coach for several years after. I love the way they've been competing for the four games. It doesn't matter to me that they only have one win, but you as a reporter, you must really love some of the questions and answers. I mean, the dialogue with the coach, just it's refreshing, huh? Yeah, uh, and he was not a, a good talker as a player, seriously, because – he was a business, morning yeah. skate, after a game, pre-game, all the time. Uh, his answer were really short and no sweets. <laughs> he didn't like that. Uh, and it's very, really, com really comfortable as a coach. And I, I like the way he handled the situation. He's not here to learn. He's already the boss. Like last Sunday, Shuneman played a pretty decent game. Yeah, uh, St. Louis was asked after the game his comment and uh, Sean and uh, performance, and he said, "Yeah, during the game, I told Luke, Luke Richardson, play him more. He deserves it. He's good." So, less than a week in charge, he was not asking his assistant coach; he was giving order to the assistant coach, and uh, I, I like that. Uh, like he said, he, he wants his best player to express them, themselves on the ice. Like in the past, when you go to overtime, what do you want to do first when the when the face out? So in the last couple of seasons in Montreal, all the coaches they start the overtime with Brian Janta, Thomas Plikanets, Philippe Dano. Uh, Philippe Dano. Yesterday, Jake Evans, he had a wonderful game face off wise. But say we started the game with Suzuki, Caulfield, and Petrie. And then second wave, Pitlick, Hoffman, Schudeman. Oh my God, what's going on here? Third wave. Hey, that's have, those are skaters. Pitlick, Hoffman, Schudeman, those are guys that skate. And you exactly. can tell that Marty St. Louis understands, which would all due respect to other coaches the Canadians have had in the past, I don't think they really, look, they're not stupid either, but I don't think they grasp the fact that three-on-three three hockey and five-on-five five hockey, it's a totally different game. And they were putting some of their more reliable defensive five-on-five five hockey players to play three-on-three three hockey. And, and that's not, not what that, works. He fills the bench to... Uh, I believe that in the last couple of coaches in Montreal that Michel Therrien was the, the best to manage a game and, and change things. And uh, St. Louis yesterday, yesterday, after the game, when we asked him about uh, Caulfield on the ice for the tying goal and on the ice for the winning goal, he told us uh, Caulfield uh, had a good game. That was the first time of his career he played over 20 minutes in a real, regular season game. So we said uh, he was on the bench. We had a couple of penalties. I knew we had some fresh legs and good stamina. So I sent him, sent him on the ice with an empty netter. Then he said, there were no doubt when you score a tying goal like that, you're so pumped. So that's why he was on the ice in overtime and he scored as well in OT. So I feel he can change his mind during the game, react to what the other coach is doing. And I, I love that. You want fresh legs and stamina? Get on the treadmill. I did. 
even though you might not. It does. I, I went from five chips to three. Matrixholdfitness.ca. I'll tell you that my Matrix T75 treadmill with XUR console, it's a 22-inch, and I get to watch Look on RDS.ca do his work. I get to watch YouTube, Netflix, all that stuff. It's a beautiful thing. Check it out. Bring it home. Discover a club-quality workout in the comfort of your own home. Visit matrixhomefitness.ca. All right, okay. After Gorton hiring Hughes, who hired St. Louis, and they hired Le Cavalier and Bobrov, who is the next hire for the Montreal Canadiens? I know some people are already saying, will it be Brad Richards to complete the line <laughs> of Richards, St. Louis, and Le Cavalier? I don't think so. Uh, our friend Eric Engels asked the question uh, this afternoon to Vidi Le Cavalier. I, I think the, the, the job is done now. Uh, just have to, to move some players and uh, start to rebuild and uh, do a good draft. I, maybe there's going to be some art, but uh, now everybody, everybody think uh, there's no need for harder jobs. I wouldn't be surprised if they hire a development coach. I yeah. don't know who that would be, but if I take a look at those organizations, they've had development coaches, yeah. and I wouldn't be surprised if they hire a development coach uh, outside of the staff that they have, of course. Maybe we'll see. I guess for the, the younger younger guys, uh, Francis Guillaume and Rob Ramage are doing a pretty good job too. You know that Larry Robinson uh, used to, you know, once a month or, or, or he would show up in St. Louis Blues and send a week with the players and he would do the same thing with the San Jose Sharks. I'm wondering, you know, Vinny LeCavalier and all the things that you talked about, if he will step on the ice with some players after practice, work with the centermen, work on the face-offs and, and – I'm wondering if besides helping out as a special advisor and doing some scouting, if we might actually see him on the ice and doing some development work with some of the players. Yeah, maybe not at the beginning, but he will be around. So uh, yeah. maybe at one point he, he will do it. We'll see. We'll see. Why not? Look, Jelena, it's always fun. And I hope that you're going to be around the next time I pick up the phone and I call you to come back on the sick podcast. Yeah, anytime, my friend. <laughs> because you, my friend, are my part of my country club. Oh, you know, we're yes. part of the... We're part of the wolf pack, like in the hangover. <laughs> Alan, Brian, Doug, and Stu, I think were their names, huh? All right. Okay. You can check out the Sick Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow us at the Sick Podcast. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's absolutely for free for you. But the more people watch, the more money I make. What a beautiful world. <laughs> it's Marination and the Sick Podcast. Merci, mon chum. Have a great weekend. Salut, Luc Jelina, one of the best. At RDS. Salut, Luc. Salut, mon ami. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by 8.6, intense by nature. <laughs>